Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Burnett with Israeli News Live. And I'm going to go into the subject. Actually, we're going to be talking about two subjects, the Sabbath and the 90 and 9 sheep and the one that goes astray. Uh, the parable, famous parable that Jesus spoke about. And I think it's going to be kind of interesting. It'll be brief, but interesting. And I think you might like this. I want to start off in Genesis chapter 17. Um, actually, maybe we should go to Matthew before going to Genesis here. And this is in Gen uh, Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse 10. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, Doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seek after that uh, which has gone astray? And if so, be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more for that sheep than for the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish." You know, if this is to me a fascinating subject because a lot of times we think about the little ones as being like the child that he came and he sat and he told him, you know, to offend one of the least of my little ones. It'd be better if you had a millstone hung around your neck and you were cast into the depth of the sea. But he's not actually talking about a child. He was using the child as an analogy. Well, this gets even more interesting because the 90 and 9, well, they had not gone astray, period. Let's look at, uh, before I go into that, let me look at the Hebrew Matthew, the same place, verse 10. Take heed lest you judge one, uh, lest you judge one of my small lads. I say to you that their angels always see the sons of my father who is in heaven. And the Son of Man has stopped saving the enemy. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them runs off, will he not leave the ninety and nine in the mountains and go seek the one which has strayed? If he should find it, truly I say you will, to you, he will rejoice over it more than the ninety and nine which did not go astray. Thus my Father, who is in heaven, does not wish that any of these lads be lost. All right? If we go back to Genesis chapter 17, you'll see a type of this in the fact when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, 99, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am God Almighty, walk before me, and be you wholehearted. Perfect, I think, is how King James translates it. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. And Abraham, uh, Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For the father of a multitude of nations have I made you. But notice, he was 90 and 9 years old, and he was to be wholehearted or perfect, is what he was told to be. Like the 99 sheep that had not gone astray, Abraham at 99, we see there, was to be perfect. If you look over in the book of Luke, and you're going to see what I'm getting to here in a minute, it's kind of interesting. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners were to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which was lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on the shoulders, rejoicing. And when he come, comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents, 
more than over the 99 just persons which need no repentance. See, like God told Abraham at 99, be therefore perfect. From that day forward, walk perfectly before me. A type of the 99, the 99 sheep that were perfect and needed no repentance. Then we jump over to Luke. I'm getting, like I said, I'm going to take you somewhere on this. Not very deep, but just something interesting. And it came to pass as he went into the house. We are, by the way, we're in Luke chapter 14. One of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass, an ox, fall into a pit, and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? Right? And they could not answer him again to these things. If you look over into Mark, another place where this happens, chapter 2, and he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he had need and was hungered? He and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abithar, the high priest, and did eat the showbread which is not lawful to eat but for the priest, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. In other words, God gave the rest so that man could rest. Sure, it was a type of God resting the seventh day after doing the creation, but he made it for man. As Jesus clearly says, he didn't even make it for himself. He made it for man. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Now, it gets very interesting. We are in Mark chapter 3. He saith unto the man, verse 3, which had the withered hand, stand forth. Actually, let me back up. He entered into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had, had, a, had, a, had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. He said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil? Pay real close attention to what he says. I'm going to back up and read that again. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil? To save life or to kill? I don't think I need to interpret that part for you, right? To save life is to do good. To kill is to do evil. There, that, there's your antecedent. The antecedent is right there. Which one is it to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath? And then he answers it. Is it evil to save life or to kill? Saving life is not evil, evil but kill clearly is. But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. You see, they call what is good evil, and evil good. I'm going to show you what he's talking about, though, right? This is, this is no joke about this. This is very serious. So he said, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? So he saved life. He restored. He gave the blind man his sight, restores the withered hand, raises the dead. 
And so many times he did things on the Sabbath. And you might ask, what's this got to do with the 90 and 9? You're going to see. Leviticus. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, this is Leviticus chapter 23, by the way. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall be a solemn rest unto you, a memorial proclaimed with the blast of horns, a holy convocation. By the way, that solemn rest is Lechem Shabbaton, a Sabbath. You shall do no manner of several work, and you shall bring in an offering made by fire unto the Lord. You're not allowed to work, but you will bring in an offering. You will kill. Let's make it a little bit clearer. Numbers, chapter 28, verse 9. And on the Sabbath day, Be'yom HaShabbat. Okay? That literally means, and on or in the Sabbath day, two he lambs of the first year without blemish and a two tenths parts of an ephah, the fine flour for a meal offering, mingle with oil and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. Ola Shabbat Beshavato. Beside the continual burnt offering and the drink offerings thereof. On the Sabbath day, two he lambs of the first year without blemish and two tenths parts of an ephah of fine flour, a meal offering mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. Every Sabbath day. Now, you got to understand, Jesus knew what the law was put there for. But he's trying to teach you. You're no longer under that law. But the Pharisees wanted to keep the people in the law. That's why he asked the question, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days? Days, plural, or to do evil? To save life or to kill? Israel had just spent 1,600 years killing on the Sabbath day. 52 Sabbaths in a year, not counting the high holiday Sabbaths, which was what we read in Leviticus. Other than that, 52 Sabbaths in a year, and they were to do the killing and offering of those animals on the Sabbath days. So he wanted to know which one, which one is lawful. I think in, in, in the expression itself, you know, let's just think about it. He said unto them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil? They were making it unlawful to do good, but it was okay to do the killing. Let me show you yet the clincher. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Jesus at, the, at his crucifixion, Matthew chapter 27. From the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. They hadn't gone to heaven, friends. They were asleep, waiting for the shepherd. And came out of the graves, when? After his resurrection. And went where? Into the holy city and appeared unto many. When did they rise up? After his resurrection. As we know, he was killed on Good Friday. And they wanted to get him off the cross before the Sabbath began, Friday evening at sunset. 
You know, there's another scripture, and I didn't put it up here, but let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, two, two scriptures I've got to share with you here. First Peter chapter 3. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas that they speak evil of you as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing. For Christ also once suffered for sins, that the, unjust, that the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Haven't you ever asked yourself the question, whatever happened to all those other souls, the spirits, the souls that died, that were children of Seth? You mean to tell me only one father and his sons and their daughters were the only ones that were saved at that time? You know, it kind of reminds me of what's going on in these days here. You have millions of Christians and millions are going to be deceived. But they're good people. And as the scripture says here, for Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached into the spirits in prison. It's not just the fact that he went and preached to the spirits in prison. He went and preached on the Sabbath day. Now do you see what he's talking about when he says, the 90 and 9 that never strayed, but the one sheep that went and fell into a pit? And let's pull back real quick. In one place, just as he goes astray, the one that went astray, but uh, what is it? Um, not the one about David. Let's see. Let me find it. Uh, here we go. We'll find it here. Is it okay? Da, 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 da. Looking for, hang on, bear with me. managed to lose this one spot. It's okay, here it is right here. Uh, in Luke's Gospel, the 14th chapter, verse 5, and answered him, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? Do you realize the difference there? An ass or an ox. Not even a lad, not even a man. But it's actually using, because we are the sheep. The sheep types the children of God. 
the ox and the ass doesn't. But nonetheless, he said, you on the Sabbath day will go pull it out. So those souls that were imprisoned were like the ass and the ox. But on the Sabbath day, our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, went to the pit and pulled them out. One more I've got to share with you here in closing. In the Gospel of John, chapter 5, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. This, this happened out at the pool. Remember that... Uh, Now there is a, a Jerusalem by the sheep market. Isn't that beautiful? Right by the sheep market. A pool. I've been there before. I'm sure you have as well. And they say that's it. Thing is like 20 feet underground. Maybe it was. Who knows? I don't know. Which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida. Having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And by the way, when Jesus came down there, they were there on the Sabbath day and they were still waiting. Think about that. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in, the, in that case, and he said unto him, Will you be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the, when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked, Then asked they him, what man is it that which said unto you, Take up your bed and walk? And he that was healed, wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus find, findeth, him, findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My Father works hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. He didn't just say God was his father. He said his father worked hitherto. Now according to the, I'm no, like I said, I'm no Greek scholar, but according to some ways to translate that Greek word, it can be as suspended. My father works hitherto. In other words, he has suspended that work or he has suspended the law of Sabbath. I don't know. I mean, you can think about that one for yourself. I'll take you over there. Let's just look at this real quick here. Let me uh, blow up this portion here. Um... Wait a minute. I know I've got a little little button here somewhere. There it is. Makes it bigger. Oh, now easy. You guys can see that. So we're going to verse 17 right here, right? My father worketh, all right, with work, the worketh part, the task. He does the task. Hitherto, we have two words here. Heos, and that is until... Uh, and also, or it can be while, until, 
and the other one is through the idea of suspension. Just now, this day, hour, hence, forth, is what it's saying. So, hither to. So, is it saying that he is toiling, he is working, and, and he is doing this until, for during that, uh, I took it kind of like as a suspension of time, maybe what he is trying to say. But nonetheless, Jesus says, my father worketh hitherto, and I work. In other words, the father was working on the Sabbath, and if the father was doing it, he was going to do it also. These are just amazing insights. And I just had to share those with you because I thought they were so beautiful, especially the 90 and 9. And that one sheep that fell into the pit, the 99 didn't go astray at all. That's another interesting thing. Makes you wonder if they were even here on earth. I don't know of any man that was without sin. But 99 are without sin. But he came here. And even here, I think we had a cat join us. There's only one. Oh, this is Payway. Payway needs a good home, by the way. Uh, he's a male cat. Very sweet, very affectionate, and he has been, he's been neutered, so he's not going to reproduce or anything. It's just we got a little bit too many, and his mother was a stray cat that my father-in-law took in and cared for. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good afternoon. Hopefully I can do that video for Patreon tonight too. I'm still wanting to get into that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to put it off tonight or tomorrow one. I did share uh, a wonderful testimony with you guys. And speaking of testimony, oh my gosh, I've got another one I've got to share with you guys. And I'll probably do that over on Patreon as well. A lady that was very, very sick to the point where her husband thought she would die, recently prayed for her. I prayed for her and God restored her completely. God bless you and thank you.